Fulton County's district attorney is forced to place his wife and brother-in-law on leave. The move comes hours after the state found his office violated a policy. I'm Josh Rowe. And I'm Kim Chapman. The Tennessee controller says DA Neil Pinkston violated the Nepotism Act by hiring his wife as chief of staff and her brother. Sabrina Majore takes a closer look at the report and what happens next. Sabrina. Josh and Kim, that's right. There's still lots of questions about what needs to happen next. We tried to bring those questions to the DA's office in this building behind us here as we work to learn more about what this means. This report today making a final judgment on allegations that surfaced back in May. The truth is out. If, if the DA doesn't know the law, why is he a DA? The claim Hamilton County's district attorney was violating state nepotism law by marrying this woman on his staff, Melidia Cluel, then promoting her. Are any of those employees a relative of you? No. Pinkston later appeared before commissioners in October, where he admitted that both his wife and brother-in-law were on county payroll. Then came this heated exchange with Commissioner Tim Boyd, who Pinkston's office prosecuted in 2018. You didn't hide any facts whatsoever. Yes, you did hide facts. You have a, a personal agenda against me. And that's very clear. Commissioners threatened to take away funds from Pinkston's office in September, but stopped short of that move. What are the facts? Is he using the system to play a shell game with his wife and his brother-in-law? But after Senator Todd Gardenhire's office asked for a state opinion on the issue, the Comptroller's office now says Pinkston did violate state policy. More than anybody around should... should know exactly what the law is and how he was in violation of it. The report says all employees of the district attorney general's office are considered state employees. That's regardless of whether their salaries are paid by the state or county. But the report also says in spite of this violation, there was no favoritism shown to Pinkston's relatives when it comes to salary raises. They concluded they would be they worked directly for him, which is a direct violation of the law. Today, we requested an interview with Pinkston and tried to reach him in his office, but we're told he was out today. A statement from the DA's office says both Pinkston's wife and his brother-in-law have been placed on leave effective immediately. Now again, Pinkston's wife and brother-in-law have been placed on leave, and the report says one or two things need to happen next. That's either their employment needs to be terminated or that they need to be moved to another government office. A number of fights here on Station Street over the past few months has brought attention over to Blue Light, which has had its license come into question several times. However, today, the owner, Brian Joyce, is now bringing the attention to his neighbors, Westbound and Reagans. The deliberate effort to try to sabotage my business my business reputations. After another suspension of Blue Light's beer license, owner Brian Joyce is demanding fair treatment. The amount of time and money that I've had to spend uh, defending myself against these accusations is getting frustrating. The beer board suspended Blue Light's beer license last week for failing to report two fights last January on a landline phone. Now, what Joyce says his Station Street neighbors should be cited for similar infractions. Four infractions now in the past two months alone. If this beer board does not take any action, they will expose themselves. He shared a series of videos from the 19th and 20th outside Westbound and Reagan's, showing fights he believes should qualify as violations. All establishments must report disorderly conduct. This city code says any form of disorderly conduct must be reported to 911. But on the 19th and 20th, CPD confirmed these incidents were never reported. It is their responsibility, whether it happens inside their property or in the parking lot, on the deck, on the porch, if it's on their premises, they are responsible. Calandra Smith with the Hamilton County Coalition says the failure to call 911 is cause for citation. They would be in violation of that. We reached out to CPD to see if citations for Westbound or Reagan's were issued. They say it remains under investigation. I expect there to be some equity and some justice. After bringing these cases to CPD, the beer board, and those watching on social media, Joyce waits for a response. The ball's in their court. After speaking with one beer board member, he says that they are unaware of the issues at Reagan's and Westbound's, but if CPD does give them citations, he says they will look into it. So members of Chattanooga's Urban League haven't met the city's new police chief, but they have high hopes for the impact she would make here.
There is excitement in Chattanooga's black community for the progression of success, one being the new appointment of Celeste Murphy, being the city's first black woman as police chief. To see Celeste uh, coming in and filling that role, that'll be inspiration. President and CEO of the Urban League, Candy Johnson, says this is a milestone for the black community. Yeah, it's inspiring um, to have a female leader, especially with all of the challenges that we have um, in communities of color. According to the inaugural report on the state of black Chattanooga, homicide rates for black Chattanoogans are over 12 times higher than whites. A black woman stepping into this position has the community hopeful for the future. Uh, I think it's a huge step in a good direction. Um, I'm sure there's other work that needs to be done as well, but I do believe that this is something that will definitely uh, progress the city and move us forward uh, and, and maybe also bring some other good things to light. After 23 years of experience on Atlanta's police force, in this profile of Murphy from APD, she talks about how her background plays into her career choice. As a black officer, you know, we were black before we came on the department. So we've seen some of the things that people are experiencing. And it's also one of the reasons why a lot of us get on the department, because we want to be a part of the change. What's still to be seen? How she can bring that to Chattanooga's force? Do I believe that we can always change the department? Of course, because, you know, in any aspect of life, there's always some type of change and, and evolution that's needed. In today's report, the Urban League also found that the physical health of black Chattanoogans is a 64 on the Equality Index, showing a significant gap where the health status of white residents is benchmarked at 100.